AI. I've got a new data analytics project I've been working on with my colleague Jerry DeMasso that I want to tell you about today. It's called NAR. We're about to go to Alpha and we're looking for some people to help us give feedback. So I want to give you a little introduction to it. And if you're interested, I'd love for you to sign up at alpha.nar.io. The idea behind NAR is that data exploration is a creative process. And so we really want to provide creative tools for exploring data as rapidly as possible. It's really allowing you to get into a flow state with your data so you can get as many perspectives of it as possible. So you can kind of answer and ask questions that you had never really seen or thought of before in a very uh, intuitive way. So it's not really about data presentation. It's not a visualization tool for like pixel perfect dashboarding or reporting. It's more about that exploration process when you're really trying to understand a data set from multiple angles. So again, if you're interested, feel free to sign up for our alpha and we'll get you on there. Love to get your feedback. I'll show you a quick demo of a few features of the tool. So what we've done is load in data from this Russian troll tweet set provided by 538. This is a data set of tweets coming from a troll factory where you have accounts tweeting kind of fake news on the right, fake news on the left, trying to kind of influence people and, and just increase the amount of tension by uh, tweeting this inflammatory information. So we've loaded this into the NAR tool and we've got it kind of modeled on a data set, something like this. So we have two data tables, this, these troll tweets with authors and the content of the tweet and language and categories and things like that. And a calendar it gives us more information about you know the published date and breaking it out by calendar fields. Now these are going to be linked together in the NAR tool using an associative engine called ClickCore, coming from a company called Click. And that's going to allow us to do some interesting things with uh, data exploration. So let's jump back right into an explore mode of the NAR tool with the data loaded. The first thing you might notice is this canvas in the middle. And the canvas is a place where you can do some freeform data exploration. It's very much meant to be a place where you can try to explore and create and destroy and just kind of move rapidly. So you have kind of this infinite canvas where you can keep adding and moving and changing and manipulating objects, whether it be resizing them or changing their properties, such as maybe we'll look at this chart by publish year instead of publish hour. So it's all about kind of rapid changes to the chart. So that's how you kind of visualize the data. It's your place to actually explore that, uh, that data. Now, to do this, we need to kind of manipulate the actual data that we're looking at. So NAR has this concept of context. So we have the entire data set loaded right now. So we're looking at the entire context of the data, these 2.9 million tweets. But thanks to that associative engine I mentioned before, what we can do is start to manipulate this context to look at subcontexts of information. So on the left here in this filter strip, I have every field that I've loaded into the data set. What I can do is I can take any of these fields, and by the way, here's metadata about how much unique values are in those fields, and I can filter them. So I could say maybe let's just look at the non-English accounts. What you'll see is when I apply that filter, everything updates because what I've done is I've created a new context of the data. I've created a limited perspective with that filter, and that filter worked across all the tables. So now I'm looking at 820,000 tweets, and you can see my charts updated. You can see that my statistics that I had added myself as a kind of uh, benchmarks for me to look at, those are updating. I can even see that all these numbers and metadata about the fields themselves have updated. So I can see that I've basically filtered to about half of the authors in the current context or a third of the tweets in the current context. Now you could see with those fields that I also have histograms. So as I'm looking at that, I can see these histograms updating. So looking at one filter, you know, but one by one is interesting, but we really want to enable you to move as quickly as possible. So we have a filter strip at the bottom that gives you access to all the filters with histograms. So as I'm filtering, say, like what the right trolls are doing, I can see how does that break out by account type? How does that break out by authors? How does that break out by the different languages? We have English, French, Italian, and then we have some languages that aren't even kind of linked in there. So we can see those distributions as we update and kind of pile these filters on top of each other. Now, filtering on its own is interesting, but sometimes when you're looking at a context of data, you need to kind of get a perspective outside of that context without losing that main perspective you already had. So we call that lensing. So what lenses do is allow you to kind of escape the current context and see other perspectives on that data. So let's use the author field as an example. Right now we're looking at the total context and we're looking about at about 3,000 authors. What I can do is open this lensing panel and start to add criteria to lens these authors differently. For example, I could do an association lens where I say, okay, show me only the authors that have content where they've tweeted the word Hillary in it, so they've mentioned Hillary. You'll see it updates to show me, okay, now I have a list of 975 authors here. And I can keep adding and creating these lenses in more complex ways. So I could add another criteria, like I also want that lens to look at con 
content that never mentioned Bernie. So I have an association with tweets with Hillary, but no association in the data set with Bernie, and I get those 390 tweets. And I can keep going with this. I could say, okay, and for that, show me the top five by number of tweets. And so there's the top five that never, that wrote about Hillary, that never written about Bernie. And I can even say, let's do that within, across another field. Like, hey, give me the top five across all the account categories. And now I have 35 authors that mentioned Hillary, never mentioned Bernie, are top five across their indi individual kind of categories that they fall into. Now there's a few things I can do with this list. I could just add it back into my context. So I could say, hey, let me just filter. And, and now my current context reflects those 35 uh, individuals. And I can see the top author was Politics Today and it's 85,000 tweets, et cetera. And I can see that distribution. Um, so I can use those lenses and kind of cool ways like that to really get these different cuts of data and then bring them back into my context. But what would also be useful is to compare context to each other. So instead of just applying, looking at lenses in these kind of searches and then maybe feeding them back into our existing context, we also want to visualize them against different combinations of lenses. So what you can do in NAR is you can take any chart and put it into a comparison mode. So every chart has the ability to have kind of a mode to split itself and be able to compare t versions of itself in what we call layers. So in this layer right now, I have the current context that will update as I filter the context. And I have a comparison context, which right now maps to the current context. But what I can do is I can actually apply lenses to this. So let's go back to that author lens example. I'll just do a simple one of like, here's the top five uh, tweeters by number of tweets. I'll just drag this lens onto the comparison context. And now I have this context that's showing me what my current context is versus what is the current context for just the top five in that context. And I can see there's some differences there in, in how they tweeted by hour of day. Now this is going to kind of keep updating dynamically. So I could go to maybe like the publish year and let's just look at 2016. And we'll see this is 2016 versus 20 the top five in 2016. So that lens is really going to keep building off dynamically. I could do some more advanced things with that lens. So let's say I go back to this author piece. I could do things like, just like before, I could say, let's do people that have written in Russian. Maybe they never wrote anything in Ukrainian. And again, I could keep going and add, let's do just the top five within that group, or even the top five within account category. So very rapidly, you can build these kind of complex combinations of perspectives in the data set and, and compare them side by side. You can move the lenses back into the, the current context, et cetera. So the idea, again, is to give you the ability to really rapidly get as many different perspectives on a data set as possible using kind of in, in, in intuitive but complex filtering and lensing. So that's a preview of what the tool can do. There's a lot of stuff I didn't show today. Uh, we'd love to get your feedback. If you're interested in contributing, kind of giving some feedback or just seeing more about the tool, uh, go to alpha.nar.io and sign up and we'd ha be happy to have you.